Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today. I am flying solo to talk about the latest installment in the Wizarding World slash Harry Potter franchise, Fantastic Beasts and the Secrets of Dumbledore. This is the third film in the Fantastic Beasts series and follows magizoologist Newt Scamander, played by Eddie Redmayne, and a ragtag team of witches and wizards as they seek to thwart the plans of magic supremacist dark wizard Gellert Grindelwald, played by Mads Mikkelsen. The film also stars Jude Law returning as Albus Dumbledore, Ezra Miller as Credence Barebone, Callum Turner as Newt's brother Theseus, Dan Folger as Jacob Kowalski, and Alison Sudol as Queenie Goldstein. The film is directed by David Yates, who is directed every Wizarding World film since Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix way back in 2007. Now, before I get much further, I wanted to say that I am a huge Harry Potter fan. The first Harry Potter film came out 20 years ago, if you can believe that, when I was in kindergarten, and I was the perfect age to fall in love with those books and movies. As a matter of fact, the third Potter film, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, is one of my top three favorite movies of all time, bar none. So, I'm going to begin with what I liked about this movie because full disclosure, I found the whole thing to be pretty disappointing and I'm afraid that if I start with the bad news, I'm just gonna spiral. By far, the strongest element of this movie are Grindelwald and Dumbledore. Jude Law reprising his role from the previous film in the series is a fantastic choice for a young Dumbledore and does an exceptionally good job of getting the feel and cadence of Michael Gambon's performances from the Potter films without feeling like he's doing an impression. It's brilliant casting akin to Ewan McGregor as the young version of Obi-Wan Kenobi in the Star Wars prequels. I loved him in the last film and I was pleased to see him take on a larger role in this installment. Mads Mikkelsen as the villainous Gellert Grindelwald is also a standout in this movie. He's taking over the role from Johnny Depp, and while his take is certainly very different from Depp's, I think it works very well in the context of this story. And what really enhances both performances is the relationship between these two characters. It's long been alluded to since the publication of the final Harry Potter book, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, back in 2007, that Dumbledore and Grindelwald were in a romantic relationship before finding themselves on opposite sides of a wizarding war. In this film, we finally get a glimpse of that relationship, and we truly see the pain it causes both men to have to fight someone they genuinely care about about. This adds a lot more nuance to Grindelwald, who is much more than a mustache twirling bad guy in this movie, but also to Dumbledore. It's been hinted at for years that Dumbledore has something of a checkered past, but this is the first time we get a true exploration of his early years and some of the elements of his character that fall into a very morally gray area. Eddie Redmayne continues to be charming as Newt Scamander, and this is a character I've grown quite fond of. His creatures are adorable as ever, and I feel that they are much more integral to the plot of this movie than they were in the previous film. Dan Fogler as muggled Jacob Kowalski continues to steal every scene he's in. In this movie, he's given a wand, as seen in the trailers, and he uses that to great, great comedic effect. He really continues to be a standout character from this series. While I really enjoyed the aforementioned elements of this movie, they do not, unfortunately, do enough for me to give it a positive review. My biggest issue boils down to the story, which is difficult to discuss without spoilers. This movie carries over a lot of problems that plagued the previous film, The Crimes of Grindelwald, namely a confusing, convoluted, and rushed plot. The film involves getting a group of witches and wizards together to stop Grindelwald's rise to power, but it's never really clear why these particular witches and wizards have been tasked with this important mission. Usually, in a story like this, there'd be a clear outline of what skills each character brings to the table, but no such moment exists in this movie, which had me asking, why did Dumbledore need these people for this mission? That, in turn, makes it feel like the characters are only here at all because they were in the previous film. And I struggled to identify really any personal or emotional stakes for any of the characters on this quest besides there's a bad guy and he'll do bad things if we don't stop him, which is very, very broad. Notably absent from this movie is or Tina Goldstein, one of the main characters in the last two films. There had to have been scheduling issues with actress Katherine Watterson because it would make a lot of story sense for her to be present in this film. Not only would she have been useful to the team as an Auror, but more importantly, given her sister Queenie's shift of allegiance at the end of the last movie, she would have had a personal stake in this story. Unfortunately, she's hand-waved away in the first act. 
Newt Scamander, who presumably is the lead of this movie, does not experience much, if any, character growth. In fact, with only a few exceptions, most of the characters in this movie are in the same situations that we found them in at the beginning of the movie. The other major problem that I have with this movie is I just can't shake the feeling that the characters introduced in the first film, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, are only in this story out of sheer convenience. The last film, The Crimes of Grindelwald, made it very clear that the story that screenwriter and Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling wants to tell is the story of Dumbledore and Grindelwald, which is the strongest part of this movie. It's unfortunate that they've insisted on using the characters from Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them to tell this story, because it feels like, for the most part, we're seeing this story through the point of view of side characters, which makes it feel less epic and less important. It'd be like if we saw all seven of the Harry Potter books from the point of view of Seamus Finnegan. No offense to Seamus Finnegan, I happen to obviously have a lot of affection for that character. Because of this, we see far more of the Fantastic Beasts characters than we do of either Dumbledore or Grindelwald, the characters that are most consequential to the ongoing story, which is, frankly, very disappointing. I wish they'd let Fantastic Beasts largely be its own story with perhaps the occasional crossover with the Dumbledore Grindelwald story rather than desperately trying to make these characters fit into a story that doesn't really have much if anything to do with them. What I think this franchise really needs is a breath of fresh air. Director David Yates does a fine job with this movie and the film looks nice, it's shot well, but I don't think it would hurt to get a, a fresh set of eyes on this world. I also really think that J.K. Rowling should not write the screenplay to the next installments. She wrote seven great Harry Potter novels, but writing an 800-page book and a two-hour screenplay are different beasts, if you'll forgive the pun. Screenwriter Steve Cloves, who adapted seven of the eight Harry Potter films for the screen, is given a co-writing credit on this movie, but I think he needs to have more editorial control over the screenplay going forward. So, those are my thoughts on Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore. As you can probably tell, unfortunately, that's not a strong recommendation from me. If you're a die-hard Harry Potter fan, there's probably enough here for you to enjoy, and you'll take some good moments away from it, like I did. But for the public at large, or if you're more of a casual fan, I think this might be one that you skip. But... If you're curious, go see the movie and let us know what you thought in the comments. Please continue to subscribe and share co our content. Follow QCTV on all of our various social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you so much again for watching, and we'll see you back here again soon.